I wish I could say that when I was little, my mum would take us to the Tyne and watch the ships being built, that sailors' assembly line. And while there are parts of the quayside that's still stuck in that time, it's a dream of someone else's Newcastle, not mine. Mine was cranes, the skeletal sentinels standing their silent vigil, watching the water, the ebb and the flow. Time's gone by, and time's still to go. Mine was barbed wire, swirls of serrated steel and broken glass attached to my garden wall to keep out pests much bigger than rats. Terraced houses, with trees on each side of the street, strong roots pushing up the pavement, concrete ramps for the bikes that we'd ride before the council cut them down. And we graduated to joyride in a stranger's stolen car for a laugh, which it was, before the busies forced us off the road to a path. And the council scraped our ghosts from the carcass of a dead tree, and meadow well burned host my happy memories. My name is Vinnie McHugh, I'm 26 years old, I'm from Newcastle, from the West End of Newcastle, um, and I am a poet, which just feels really weird to say. Um, lots of times when people ask you, what do you do? And you tell them what you do for a living, how do you make money? Um, how I make money is I'm a teacher. Uh, what I do is I'm a poet. Um, my name's Lucina Wareham, um, but I get Lucy. I'm 22 and I've just started performing poetry. Uh, my name is Ryan, uh, I'm 24. Uh, I write poetry and I help run Northern Rising. It's a poetry event in uh, Newcastle. I first consciously remember writing poetry at about 14 or 15, just to, as a form of expression, really. The violet and the snowdrop. An open palm withdrew, the cosmos from a porcelain cup. I'll be forever blue. The violet and the violet, my veins are damp with you. Fold petal marrow in your shape. I'll be forever blue. When I was at university, I lived in a house with six people, second and third years. Um, one of the second years, his name was Percy, and he ran a poetry night. And he asked me to look at some John Cooper Clarke. And for the first time, I heard someone who sounded like me, um, who was speaking about things that I was actually interested in. Um, and it made me go, oh, I can do this. That's uh, not just middle class people can do this. I can do it as well. I can do that. I was born and raised in Southern California, and I came to Newcastle when I was 21 to study. I did my undergrad at Newcastle University. Poetry, for me, was something that I was always, was always around. I was kind of interested in it, and I started reading uh, Bukowski, Charles Bukowski, and he really kind of showed me poetry was much more than, you know, a bunch of English noblemen a couple hundred years ago uh, told me poetry can be energetic, it can be vital, it could be even dangerous, it could be exciting. Fuck the sentimentality of dead, white-haired, white-eyed, white-skinned men as if penitent for being in the present. The occasion of now sits firmly in the chest of those who are awake and free of fear. Through my interest in the American poets, Ginsburg and, and Corso and Ferlinghetti, those guys, I found out that they actually came to Newcastle in the 60s and were a part of the Morden Tower reading scene. I didn't realise this um, until recently, but Newcastle is really like the poetry centre. It's it's um, it's such a big part. There's loads of NCLA events and um, readings here. There's a lot of poetry heritage here. I actually went on a field trip. Well, yeah, field trip, I guess, to um, to Morden Tower, which is. Um, I mean, Allen Ginsberg's performed there, and it's where Basil Bunting gave his first performance of Brick Flats. Very um, sentimental and very kind of um, prominent in the poetry world. Yeah, these are the famous uh, Morden Tower stairs. Um, it's always really exciting to see because, I mean, some of the best poets of the 20th century walked up those stairs, and Basil Bunting walked up those stairs the first time he read Brick Flats in Morden Tower. Just a lot of legends went up and down those stairs. Today there's a bit of a resurgence in the Northeast. I think there's, I mean, 14 poetry readings in Newcastle a month, which is, which is quite a bit. 
Um, me and some of my friends, like I said, we kind of harken back to the 60s, kind of pick up where they left off, kind of try to bring a new spin to those ideals, that kind of style. Northern Rising is a monthly poetry event in Ernest, which is in Usburn that I help organize. It's kind of a takeoff from the Morden Tower scene and the atmosphere there. When we hit it right, um, which we have a few times, it, it, it's, it, it's at the same time very intimate, but feels very large. It feels like it's a part of something, like it's tapped into this tradition uh, of this Morden Tower Northeast poetry scene. One of the exciting things about Northern Rising is uh, we have our regulars that come. Obviously, I'm there every month. We have fellow poets that come every month. Uh, but we do see new faces every time, and that's really inspiring, that's really exciting. The first time I ever performed was at Northern Rising. You just get the impression that everybody loves kind of art and poetry and wants to be there. And it's, it's very chill and a very understanding audience. Um, I had like a page missing in one of my poems and I was just like, I said a bad word and everyone laughed, it was fine. Um, so yeah, very, very understand, very chill atmosphere. A great place to perform and great for a first time as well. We saw the same faces every time. Be fun, it'd still be fun, but it's just that extra audience that kind of proves that poetry hasn't completely lost relevance to the public. We're trying to give the public an opportunity to experience poetry in, in a way that's relaxed, in a way that's comfortable. It's just in the back of a pub, so people have drinks. It's, 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 it's just fun all the time. So. And there's something nice about sitting in a pub with a bunch of people sitting on chairs, sitting on the floor, who just want to hear a story, or they want to be entertained, or they want to laugh, or they want to cry. And you don't need a degree to do that. You don't need an education to do it. You just need something to say and somewhere to say it. There are certain ways that people choose to react to the world around them. And that could be, you know, some people choose to paint, some people choose to change what they see through running for office, that kind of thing. I was just kind of drawn to expressing the world around me through me in poetry. I think poetry for me has um, allowed me to express myself in a way that I didn't feel that I could, and I didn't feel that I was allowed to either. It gave me a voice in an area that, for me, felt was exclusively for people with an education, people who'd been to university, uh, people who'd studied it. Um, and it was not in my language at all, but now it's almost in a way we're reclaiming a tradition that has always belonged to us before there was the written word, there was the spoken word. A million ways of looking at a millennial. Alt-right puncher, carpet muncher, avocado credit cruncher, liberal cook, Donald Duck, filter on a Starbucks. Um, that sound nicer, pumpkin spicer, not a Nazi sympathizer. Take blue pillars, baby killers, beaters of a dead gorilla, trigger warner, black lives mourner, baby boomers in the corner, parent moocher, scared of future, found new toys and can't salute you. Noun defender, gender bender, only 90s kids remember. Wonder women, sick of swimming, social justice super villain. Winner, winner, tofu dinner, consolation dimwit spinner. Barbie doll fertility, masculine femininity. Educated, hate for hatred, jobless for infinity. Bursters of a diverse bubble, Hollywood is white with stubble. Parliament is white with fear. Parlez-vous anglais, monsieur? Fearless feminists are fractious, love the fat but shame the fascists. Life is hard, all woe is me, writer of bad poetry. <laughs>